Greetings and welcome to lecture six on the types of ejector refreshing system part one. Up till now we have discussed uh, as far as the ejector refreshing system is concerned. We have discussed the basic ejector refreshing system and also the simple numericals uh, based on thermodynamic analysis on ejector refreshing system. So as the ejector refreshing system, uh, it is an alternative to a conventional vapor compression cycle. Uh, as far as energy conservation point of view, uh, ejector uh, is replaced by pump, generator, and ejector. So it reduces uh, the input energy substantially. So if there is waste energy is available, then we can go for this particular system. So there are various uh, configurations used in practice based on the applications. Uh, uh, in fact, there are four combinations we are going to discuss uh, in uh, coming two lectures, this lecture and next lecture. So these are the different types of uh, ejector refrigeration system. Uh, basic ejector refrigeration system uh, that we already discussed. Uh, then ejector refrigeration system with an additional jet pump, multi-evaporator compression system, uh, which is especially used uh, if uh, uh, more than one evaporating temperature is to be maintained. And refrigeration system with integrated ejector and the combined power and ejector refrigeration system. So these are the uh, five combinations, but uh, first combination is the basic combination. So that is the basic cycle. So we already discussed this uh, basic cycle earlier. Uh, just take a review of this basic cycle. So here, uh, the compressor is replaced by the three devices, pump, boiler, and ejector. So with the help of this, there are three basic functions of the compressor. So that is the suck the refrigerant, so ejector uh, does that function and then increases pressure with the help of pump we can increase the pressure and increase the temperature in the boiler we can increase the temperature so state of the refrigerant at the outlet of the presser is same as the state of the refrigerant at the outlet of the ejector so that is high pressure high temperature vapor refrigerant so then it enters into the condenser where it get condensed uh, with the help of cooling medium then uh, at five, it divides into two streams. One stream goes to boiler uh, for uh, boiling process, and other stream it expands in the expansion valve before entering into the evaporator. It takes up heat from the uh, uh, substance which is to be cooled, uh, and then it gets evaporated. And this evaporated uh, refrigerant is uh, sucked uh, to the ejector, and in order to suck this refrigerant, the motive fluid is generated in the boiler. It is made to flow through this uh, primary nozzle and it creates a suction here. And because of this suction, the refrigerant is sucked from the evaporator. So the suction, that is one part. And also uh, the mixture is compressed in the diffuser section as well. So partly it assists the compression as well. So the ejector, it is also called as a thermocompressor. So that is a basic, uh, so this can be used as an alternative uh, to vapor compression cycle. But the major difficulty of this, it has a very low COP. We have seen in the numericals that uh, COP is less than one, around 0.7.3. So there are various configurations used to enhance the COP, as well as uh, 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 to meet the application needs. Uh, but even the COP is not a major concern because most of the energy we require, that is, uh, uh, that is a low-grade energy to the boiler. So if the waste heat is available, like vapor absorption cycle, then uh, the people can think about this ejector refrigeration system. Uh, so this is an uh, advanced vapor compression cycle. And it's coming up really because it also uh, saves a lot of energy because as compared to a compressor, the power required for the pump is very less. So that's why uh, it is a quite a potential uh, system. Uh, only the thing is that uh, that COP is a major concern, but if the waste heat is available, then uh, this is not a, a bothering factor. The COP is insignificant if the waste heat is available. Uh, so the first modification we can say that, uh, uh, or we can say the one type uh, that is ejector refrigeration system with additional jet pump. So if the conventional or the basic ejector refrigeration system is not able to generate that pressure. Uh, so we can use the multiple ejector. So this system is also called as a, a multi-stage ejector refrigeration system because uh, the 
ejector is used in stages they are connected in series uh, so in order to meet uh, the requirement also in subtypes uh, we need to maintain a higher condensing temperature especially if you are going for air cool condenser uh, then uh, it is very difficult to maintain a low condensing temperature because in the summer also the cooling medium temperature increases the condensing temperature increases so it is very difficult to uh, maintain a uh, low condensing temperature so in that case also we can use these stages of the ejectors and we can overcome that also in order to maintain uh, uh, the higher refrigeration temperature suppose if we have to use the system for a condition refrigeration point of view so more temperature difference is required so more temperature difference means more compression is required so ejector the uh, difficulty of ejector uh, unlike compressor is uh, the compression that because this is uh, uh, we can say the rotodynamic uh, thermo compressor so like positive displacement compressor its compression capacity is not similar to respirating compressor so we need to use uh, this ejectors in stages to uh, maintain that higher temperature difference now this is about uh, the important features of this particular cycle uh, it is also called as a multi stage ejector refrigeration system now we'll discuss its thermodynamic part as well as the cycle working uh, with the help of uh, ph diagram we will explain so better to understand ph diagram that is pressure and enthalpy diagram so like uh, in ph diagram uh, now uh, if we see here there are three pressures so first evaporator pressure uh, which is same as the ejector pressure because both ejector uh, erotically both ejector and uh, evaporator they have work at the same pressure but comparatively the ejector pressure is slightly less than the evaporating pressure but uh, for simplicity we consider both are working at same temperature the second pressure line that is for the jet pump that is the second ejector a jet pump is nothing but a second ejector so that is second pressure line the third pressure line is the condensing pressure line and the fourth pressure line that is the generator pressure line so there are four pressure lines so this is also called as a four pressure system now uh, we start from point number 1 so that is the outlet of the generator uh, so outlet of the generator it goes simultaneously simultaneously to jet pump as well as ejector so 1 to 2 uh, so these are the uh, this is ejector pressure this evaporating pressure ejector pressure condensing pressure and generator pressure so one point uh, so at one point it enters into the ejector that of the primary nozzle so primary nozzle of the ejector and then when it expands it expands isentropically so in ejector it expands from 1 to 2 and in jet pump it expands from 1 to 2a so this is the expansion of uh, primary fluid in two ejectors simultaneously because generator uh, from the generator two streams uh, we can use that one stream goes to jet pump another stream goes to ejector so 1 to 2 is the expansion in ejector and 1 to 2a is the expansion in jet pump uh, then in the jet pump uh, uh, then in the ejector so directly uh, with the help of this uh, secondary fluid the mixture is generated the mixture point is point number 3 and from 3 to 4 uh, the, again the pressure rise happens in the ejector now this mixture is enter into the jet pump because here Uh, if it is directly connected to the condenser, uh, uh, in some cases, if the condenser pressure is more, in that case there is a possibility of back pressure and uh, stop the operations. So under that circumstances, generally this configuration can be used. So the outlet of ejector is connected to jet pump, this suction line, where already here the pressure is generated. So this is uh, comparatively a higher pressure. So at point two A, so two A is pressure. Uh, and then the mixing takes place, and the mixing mixture point is five. That four and two a mixes, and the mixing point is five. So five to six is again compression in the jet pump up to the condenser pressure. Then from the condenser, that six to seven is condensation process. Uh, that is six to seven. Then seven it divides into two streams. One stream goes to the pump, uh, goes to the generator through pump. So seven to ten is the pumping, and second stream it goes to the evaporator to expansion valve so 7 to 8 is the expansion then 8 to 9 is the 
evaporation. So then 9 and 2 uh, mixes and the mixing point is point number 3. The second stream that is at 10, it enters into the, at 10, it enters into the generator and from generator uh, it evaporates. That is 10 to 1 is the generation. So this completes the cycle. So this is the ejector efficient system with additional jet pump and it's made, it is also called as a multi-stage ejector refrigeration system. So this is note, uh, we can refer this note pretty, uh, most of the, uh, I have uh, dictated uh, the configurations or dictated uh, the importance of important features also. Mainly uh, uh, this system can be used for refrigeration application. If we use uh, increase of number of stages, so it can be used because generally eject, normal ejector refrigeration system is suitable for air conditioning applications. But with the help of staging, we can go for the multi-staging. This is the first configuration. Uh, its main application for higher condensing temperature as well as for refrigeration application. Uh, but with the help of this jet pump also, uh, we can improve it because entrainment ratio is increased. So the efficiency or COP can be improved by around 9 to 12 percent. Uh, due to increase in mass flow rate to the evaporator, better suction happens. Uh, the second uh, configuration is multi evaporator compressions. So this is a configuration uh, generally used uh, uh, if more than one evaporating temperature is to be maintained. Uh, also, especially in transportation case or transport air conditioning. Uh, so there are multiple uh, commodities, and these commodities need to be maintained at different evaporating temperatures. So in this circumstance, under such circumstances, uh, this multiple evaporator compression system is used. Uh, so here, uh, the basic compression system compressor is there. So here, main uh, role of ejector is to assist the compressor. Uh, and uh, these ejectors are placed at the outlet of the evaporator uh, to set the refrigerant and partially also uh, pre-compress uh, this refrigerant up to the compressor level. So it reduces the compressor work. So almost Again, 10 to 15% uh, COP can be increased. So normal compression system uh, with the help of this so ejectors are used. Uh, so let me explain uh, again uh, the construction working of this evaporator compression system. Just like that. Again, we, uh, there are uh, pressures, four pressures it exists. Evaporator two is the lowest pressure, then evaporator one, then evaporator three pressure, and last one is the condensing pressure. Uh, so now this is a complicated cycle. So first of all, we have the simplest point where we can locate the point on the saturation curve. So from that point, because uh, we cannot locate initially, uh, we cannot start from one because we don't know where one starts from. So the better position that is two to three is condensation process. Two points still we don't know. Uh, so three point, uh, if we consider this a simple system and three point on the saturation curve. So we can locate the three point on the saturation curve. So this is at this point. Now uh, from three, it goes to three different evaporators through expansion walls. Expansion wall one, expansion wall two, and expansion device three. And uh, the respective evaporators, uh, the also evaporation taking place. So the expansion taking place, first that is expansion of the lowest evaporator that is three to four. So that is expansion of evaporator two. So this evaporator now here, it should be judge judgmental, which evaporator maintains the lowest pressure. So obviously this is uh, the evaporator which maintains the lowest pressure because this outlet is direct, directly connected to the suction line. So this is maintained at the low, lowest pressure. So three to four, so evaporator two maintains lowest pressure. So three to four is the expansion of refrigerant uh, from condensing temperature to the evaporating to temperature. Then second one that is three to uh, six. So the second evaporator one pressure. So three to six is the expansion of second stream to the evaporator one pressure. And third stream that is three to eight. That is expansion third stream up to the evaporator three pressure. Now the evaporator seven, we start, that is uh, general evaporator two. So evaporator one, the outlet condition is seven. So seven point we can locate. So 
So this is six to seven is the evaporation. So that point is evaporating. Uh, this is evaporator outlet point that is dry saturated. So the evaporator one. So at point one, then at the point seven, it enters into the primary nozzle and it expands up to 10. So seven to 10 is the expansion of uh, this refrigerant, the primary fluid up to 10. Uh, then, uh, then 10, it four to five, then we can say the four to five is the evaporation in evaporator two. And this five and 10, uh, mixes and the mixing point is 11. So then 11 to 12, uh, that is a compression. And this compressor uh, compression is higher than uh, the ejector pressure. Uh, it is uh, less than the evaporator three, three pressure because here it enters into the secondary fluid because this acts as a secondary fluid for this ejector too. So that's why obviously pressure at 12 is less than pressure at evaporator 3. So the 12 point we can compress that is only up to 11 to 12, that is only up to this time, below evaporator 3 pressure. Uh, then the evaporation is taking place from 8 to 9. So 8 to 9 is the evaporation. So this is 12. 8 to 9, uh, that is up to again saturation point. So 9 is the point where it enters into the uh, primary nozzle. So then it expands up to 13. So 9 to 13 is the expansion. And that expansion is up to the point number 12. So point number 12, that expansion happens. Then uh, this is point number 13. So uh, 13 and 12 mixes. So and the mixing point is 14. So then it enters into the diffuser section of ejector 2. And from 14, it compresses to uh, compression, compress, inlet pressure of the compressor. That is one. So here is the point number one, and from one it compresses to two, that is compressor pressure. So then after compression, then uh, it enters into the condenser, that is two to three, that will come to the original point. So this is how the multi evaporator compression system works. Uh, uh, this system is used in transport air conditioning system, what I told earlier. And here the main role of ejector is to assist the compressor. This is the compressor because if we see if the oh, only compression system we have to use, the compression has to compress from this pressure that is evaporated to. So this much portion that is compression ratio is saved with the help of ejector. So it says the, uh, as the compression ratio is reduced, definitely it says the compressor work as well. And also the another function of compressor is to suck the refrigerant as the ejectors are placed at the outlet of the evaporator, simultaneously sucks the refrigerant from the respective evaporator as well. So this is how the multi-evaporator compression system works. You can re-watch this video to understand uh, the, the cycle again. Uh, so uh, these are some theoretical notes you can refer. Uh, that is, this system is used when more than one evaporating temperatures are maintained, especially in transport air conditioning systems. In this case, ejectors are used to pre-compress the refrigerant, very I told you, uh, before entering into the compressor. Consequently, work required for the compressor is uh, compressor used and the COP is improved. Uh, in this case, the ejectors are positioned at the outlet of the evaporator in order to enter the refrigerant from the evaporator. So at the end of this particular uh, topic, you should be able to explain a simple ejector refrigeration system uh, then uh, ejector refrigeration system with additional jet pump, uh, important features of this particular system, their applications, and uh, how it uh, improves the COP of the system. Then uh, multi evaporator system, again, its applications, important features, and uh, how it improves the COP as well. Uh, so next lecture, uh, we will discuss the remaining two types of uh, ejector refrigeration system. Thank you very much.